Let the coaching search begin. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I am RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast, reminding you if you want the latest breaking news and rumors when it comes to Texas Tech athletics, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the fastest growing Texas Tech YouTube community right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, Mark Adams has resigned or stepped down as Texas Tech head men's basketball coach. The coaching carousel involves the Red Raiders now. And here are the 10 names that I think Texas Tech needs to do their due diligence on and consider as the next head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders men's basketball team. Let's start at number 10, and it's got to be Dusty May at Florida Atlantic. Simple and plain, when you're 28-3 and three and you have a level of consistency in a solid conference like Dusty May has had, you got to make the call and see. He had some interest from Ole Miss. Looks like Chris Beard is going to be the new head coach for the Rebels down there in Oxford. But I really like what Dusty May brings to the table, all right? He's got a four-in or four-out, one-in offense. And I really think that would work well in the Big 12. We've seen it to some degree. Um, Kansas runs that to a similar effect. Um, but you could have a guy here that knows how to run that offense and has been a really solid assistant at the high major level. Right, So I really like what he brings. He also brings a unique defense as well. I think Dusty May is a guy that you have to consider and at least make the phone call to and do your due diligence at the mid-major level. Speaking of the mid-major level, Pat Kelsey at the College of Charleston. Listen, I like teams that can shoot the basketball. You probably do too. Pat Kelsey's team could do just that. Listen, he's a proven winner. He's been a head coach for 11 seasons. Five times has his team won their respective conference. That's pretty impressive, right? Like, I don't care what conference you're playing in. You win it five times, right? That's impressive. Um, and I think that he brings a style of play that would be conducive to winning in the Big 12. Now, again, I'm not sure that I would have him higher up on this list, but I get the appeal and do your due diligence. And I think the search committee will look at Pat Kelsey and have him as one of the potential options if they can't go after one of the bigger names that we'll mention here later on. Now, the next one is Alvin Brooks, as well as another Baylor assistant, J.J. John Jacobs. OK, and. I really like both of these guys. Jacus is the associate head coach. Alvin Brooks is an assistant coach. Both of them are highly respected. The Athletic had this to say about Jacus, the Baylor associate head coach. He's well respected in the coaching circles and has the renowning success of Jerome Tang's first year at Kansas State to the point to a reason to give him an assistant head coach from moving assistant to a head coaching job, right? Time spent at Gonzaga doesn't hurt either. Think about that. He's been at Gonzaga and he's been at Baylor, two of the most successful basketball programs in the past decade. When you look at it, recently Baylor and then Gonzaga's just had sustained success under Mark Few. So I'd be really interested to see him and Alvin Brooks kind of fits that mold as well. He's got Big 12 ties. He started as a Big 12 assistant up in Manhattan with Bruce Weber for four years, then came down to Waco to work under Scott Drew and you think about that. Those are two of the best coaches the Big 12 has seen in the past 20 years. So there's a lot there. I'd be fine with either of those guys and Alvin Brooks and John Jacobs from Baylor. Now moving on, this is probably the biggest name that I'll mention in this video. I got to bring up Sean Miller, right? Like you can bring up that Arizona stuff that happened to him and everything and him going back to Xavier, but He's a really good coach. He's won 74% of his career games, right? He's just a proven winner. He's done it at the elite level, right? And at this point, I think Sean Miller probably deserves another chance at the power six level. He's paid his dues and trying to get back there. And first and foremost, he's a proven winner. And I think that he would fit in the Texas Tech culture and really, really most importantly, Fill in some of those cracks in the foundation that Texas Tech men's basketball built so prominently five or five and six years, you know, these past five and six years, right? So I think that that's a big thing. I'm really interested to see if he's targeted. At least give him a phone call, right? Now, before we get into the next half of this, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know who you want to be the next head coach of Texas Tech men's basketball. There is a lot of options. There will be a search committee. Kirby Hokut has already said as much. I'm interested to see where they go because remember last time, it really felt like it was only going to be Mark Adams or Darvin Ham. I think we're going to see six, seven, eight names involved in this. And then obviously the list will be cut down. But let me know who you want to be the head coach of Texas Tech men's basketball next season at United Supermarkets Arena. All right. 
This next one is because he's so well respected already in this program. You got to give Al Pinkins an opportunity to put his name in the hat. He's one of the most highly regarded coaches in all of college basketball. He's got a ton of assistance experience at the Power Six level, spent time at Florida, obviously at Texas Tech. This is his second go around. He truly is one of those guys that every player in this program loves him. Um, and I think he would be a fantastic head coach. It's just does Texas Tech want to go that route? Right. The next one, and I'll admit and preface this from the jump, there is a lot of ifs in this. But if Texas does not sign Rodney Terry long term, you got to beeline and at least see if there's any interest in him to become the next Red Raider head coach. What he's done at Texas through the adversary, through the adversity, excuse me, that the Longhorns have gone through this year has been really nothing short of impressive. And I know that there will be people out there that say, well, he's winning with the roster that Coach Beard put together. I don't give a damn, right? Considering what happened this year, that says a lot about the character of that head coach and how he can make young men rally around one common goal and really keep a program tight in, in a tight space, right? Like that is a big time A-plus type effort from Rodney Terry this year. So if UT doesn't sign him long-term, He's a guy that I expect Texas Tech to target. The next one is interesting, and it's Kellen Sampson. No, not Kelvin. Kellen Sampson. And I want to read another clip, an excerpt from The Athletic on him. Is, it, is there a clear path of succession at Houston from his dad, Kelvin, to his son, Kellen? That's the question. Or is it just an assumption everyone makes and there's no guarantee? Even though it's soon to be Big 12 rival of his father's program, it's a pretty good situation for a first-time head coaching gig. And Samson understands personal investment with players comes first and the demands come only after that. Listen, Kellen is one of the most highly regarded young coaches in college basketball. Like, that's not a hyperbole. That's not an exaggeration. This guy has worked his ass off to get there. This is not one of those situations where um, his dad just handed him a job. No, that's not it at all. He has paid his dues and then some. He is a really, really good head coach. And I kind of want to look over some of the things that, you know, he brings to the table in terms of what he's done in his career. Because when you look at Kellen Sampson, you, you think, obviously, first and foremost, okay, his dad and everything like that. But on the recruiting trail, I'm not sure that there's a guy that's more well-respected um, than Kellen Sampson. I mean, he is unbelievable, truly, in his story and everything like that. And I think everybody really likes him. Again, he's been with the University of Houston for going on since, I believe this is his eighth season, maybe ninth since 2014. This is his coaching background. Um, starting in 07, 08, started at Indiana, then Oklahoma as a grad assistant, Oklahoma as assistant strength and conditioning, Stephen F. Austin as the assistant coach, Appalachian State for three years as the assistant coach, and now he's been in Houston that whole time. He is a highly regarded assistant coach, and I think somebody that Texas Tech really does need to target. Now, here are the next three guys that I think are going to be maybe the biggest names that are talked about. Um, and I'm going to start with the most unlikely one, even though I think it would probably be the most fun one. Um, and it's Ben McCollum. You may not know who Ben McCollum is. And to be honest with you, I, I don't really blame you. Um, but he is the head coach of Northwest Missouri State University in Maryville, Missouri. And for those that don't know where that is or who it is, um, well, it's a D2 basketball program, and this guy is unbelievable. They've won four of the past five D2 national championships because of his revolutionary offense. He truly is a wizard. Since 2015, 2016, his Northwest Missouri State teams have lost a combined total of 21 games. 20 one games. And I get it. Some people are going to be like, oh, that's too big of a jump from D2 to D1. I hear you. But listen, if you're a good basketball coach, you can coach at any level. And this guy is going to be a highly coveted guy. He's 41 years old. He knows how to play the game. And I really, really like what he brings offensively and schematically, right? He would be a breath of fresh air to all of this. And by the way, just hear this out. This is since 2013, 2014, Northwest Missouri State's respective finishes in the Division II NCAA tournament. Sweet 16, Sweet 16, Sweet 16, National Championship, first round exit, National Championship, 
got canceled because of COVID, national championship, national championship. They're the favorites to win it again this year. They could legitimately win five of the next uh, of the last six D2 national championships. It's absurd. Um, he is a coach that I am very highly interested in. Another coach that I think is going to be highly involved in this is Paul Mills at Oral Roberts. I think he's one of those guys where I don't think he gets enough credit for how good of a coach he is. Again, from the Baylor tree, he was down with Scott Drew since the jump. Right, He started down there in 03, was an assistant at Baylor from 2003 all the way to 2017, then took over Oral Roberts. We know Oral Roberts and their history in the NCAA tournament with Kevin O'Banner, Max Abrams as well. They've got a good team this year that could potentially make the tournament and really make some noise. Probably one of my dark horse favorites to win in the first round in terms of a mid-major. I really like what he does, right? They won the Summit League Tournament again this year, and you look at everything that he's done. He took an Oral Roberts team that was trash, and he had to develop something, right? He just had to, and he's been a solid coach, nothing too crazy. This year is obviously his best year. They haven't lost a game in conference play. I really like what he brings to the table. He's a Texas guy through and through. Um, alma mater is Texas A&M. He's from Houston, but he has Texas ties and knows how to recruit here. Speaking of a Texas kid, I mean, this is probably the odds on favorite guy to get the job right now if you're strictly looking at the odds. And of course, it's Grant McCaslin from UNT. You look at what he's done at North Texas, and it's been pretty damn impressive, right? Again, North Texas has not been known as a uh, juggernaut in basketball, but they've competed and then some virtually every year Grant McCaslin has been there um, since 2019. He has finished first, third, first, and second in Conference USA, okay? He's done a phenomenal job. He's got a winning percentage of 70%, um, has ties to the Big 12, another Baylor former assistant coach there, uh, head coach at Arkansas State for a little bit, obviously at North Texas. He's, he's regarded as one of those next up kind of guys um, in terms of the power six level, and I think he is a target for Texas Tech. Remember, he was kind of in the mix a little bit, uh, before Adams got hired a couple years ago. Uh, but I think if you ask me right now, hey, RC, who's the odds on favorite to get this Texas Tech job on the very early stages, right? I would probably say it's Grant McCaslin. I know that's a long video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know again down in the comments below. Who do you want to be the Texas Tech head men's basketball coach in the 2023-2024 season and beyond? I am RC Maxwell reminding you one more time, you got to join the fastest growing Texas Tech YouTube community right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. Just hit that subscribe button.